Greetings, adventurers, travelers, and fellow keepers of the lake. Today we're gonna talk about diving. <laughs> so, today we're gonna talk about underwater exploration. And see how you can enhance your own D&D game and how you can make underwater exploration less boring. We should have done this at the end of the video, not the beginning. This is horrible. <laughs> Roll the intro. So when talking about underwater exploration, and this is not a video where we are gonna talk about like underwater combat and all that, how to make it fun and things similar to that, but how to make the exploration itself interesting. I've been diving for almost 10 years now and I always think to myself, why do I like going into deep water, muddy places, dark places and just float there for some reason. So the point of this video is not to give you like a perfect rundown of the mechanics that I came up with. This is more like a video where I will share a bunch of things that I noticed while diving and maybe from there you can extrapolate a couple of your own mechanics or things like that. So when going underwater the first thing that you want to take care of is your air supply. So if you are in a fantasy setting with magic that might be uh, for example a spell. Well that spell has a certain Duration. Also, if you're in like a steampunk or a modern type of setting, you would have your uh, breeding apparatus thing. And in terms of that, you would still have like a limited time supply of air. So the things that I want to ask is, is this air expendable? So that's the, the main mechanic. You have some form of a timer that dictates how long you can stay underwater. And this is important for later. So stay, stay tuned to see how this affects the overall mechanic. Other than that, you want to know if this thing can malfunction. So in diving, sometimes your equipment can malfunction. And in that case, you need someone besides you to help you and share air with you. And that's a perfect point. Like, is your air supply shareable? In scuba diving, usually we have a thing called a regulator. And it's this thing. So you put it in your mouth and you breathe through this. And if someone else needs air, they're low on air supply. You have another one. Usually the hose is yellow, but basically you have another one and this is where you breathe so you would take one the other one would go to your partner and as you can see here my hose is really uh, really long so that's the next question how long is the distance where you can still share air with someone so if it's a spell feel free to like add some magical flair to it like if you're close to someone then his spell also is affecting them so yeah just homebrew it. The, the thing is you want your air to be shareable because then it emphasizes the party sticking together and also think about how many people can share the air. For usual scuba diving equipment you can share with only one person left but I know people that have two tanks and basically they can share air with uh, two additional people. Yeah air supply is basically not that big of a deal if you're in a group. If you're alone that becomes some form of a horror aspect that you can maybe exploit but with a lot of people you're not really afraid of running out of air and now my equipment doesn't really look traditional but this is where you uh, check how much air you have so you have some form of a timer that ticks down and you can always like look at it be like surprised or that gives some form of like suspension to your to your dive another thing that is pretty typical for scuba divers is that we control what is called buoyancy. So buoyancy, I won't go into technical terms, but basically it means how much water you displace. In everyday language, it would be, do you float or do you sink? The perfect buoyancy is where you don't float and you don't sink. So we try to level that with like a vest that we put on and we pump air into it. Uh, you won't be like doing this in your fantasy game, but try to think of like situations where someone gets like and that makes them more buoyant so if I hold a rock in my hands and I like swim through the water if someone removes that rock I would start going up I would be less buoyant so I would like be catapulted 
out of the water and this is a mechanic that could maybe uh, in some way influence how you approach enemies for example you have some like fish people that have spears and maybe they have like uh, maces you take the mace from them you disarm them and now they start like going to the surface and why this is um, interesting is because in diving you cannot really surface whenever you want you, if you go deep and when I say deep, I think like if you go uh, below 10 meters deep, I don't know what that is in feet, please forgive me my um, USA audience. But if you go deeper than 10 meters, basically you need about a minute for each 10 meters to, to surface. So rapid like catapulting out of the water would cause death. And you can keep it there, you can just use like buoyancy mechanics and air sharing mechanics and you can make a pretty interesting game out of that on its own. But if you want to go like deeper, no pun intended, then you would introduce the concept of decompression. The way that our body responds to going deeper brings about two different mechanics. So one is decompression. It's a term from diving because you're getting compressed by the pressure, it makes like some strange chemistry things happen in your body so you have to clean yourself from all that nitrogen saturation and then you can go out. Deeper you go you have less time to spend on that place before you get time that you need to spend underwater to get to the surface. I don't know if this makes sense but for example I spend and this is just random numbers but I spend like uh, 10 minutes on the depth of 40 meters that would mean that I have to spend I don't know 30 minutes on a depth of 10 meters or 5 meters to be clean and go out if you go out before the time runs out and how do we know how much time we have well we have computers on our arms that tell us they calculate everything in the before times we use tables but now we have computers basically watches that tell you everything so if you surface before that you're risking injury i will provide a decompression table where you can see like which effect the character can get if they surface prematurely or, or you can like rule it as basic damage how much decompression tokens you got and how much damage that will uh, deal to the character. Anyways, when I say decompression tokens, that's like my idea of how I would run this. You don't have to stick to this. This is just like brainstorming uh, in the middle of the filming. I would take a certain value, let's say 10 meters. Each 10 meters, you're in a different deco level. And this is not like scuba diving talk. This is more like my mechanical banter, basically. So let's say you're 10 meters deep you're fine you're level zero so no need for like deco talk then you go to 20 meters now you have a certain timer that dictates how long you can be here you can use a real world timer you can roll for a timer you can even like use a d20 as a timer and you do this in rounds and for each level you go deeper you would use a smaller die so d20 d10 d12 d8 i don't know you can adjust this as as needed for suspension and and all that but you go deeper uh you get uh, more decompression tokens if you get a lot of these tokens you would need to clean them before you go out so i would probably set like some threshold value let's say five ten meters where you have to stay for around three minutes per token or whatever you decide before you can go out and this is limiting when you think about air this is something that real divers really struggle with this is a real life scenario basically yeah the other thing that uh, is very interesting is that when you go deeper there is a thing called nitrox narcosis which means that you start like getting drunk this is a phenomenon where it starts like alcohol and and slowly progresses to a more psychedelic type of effect and it happens for people around 35 meters of course you can adjust all of these and if your players uh, require explanation just say it's magic there is an interesting description of magical uh, depths in the book of Imagica. i think i have it right here and it's where a goddess is basically hidden in a lake. I won't spoil more than that, but you can always do something like that and say every five meters you get like a narcosis uh, debuff or you have to roll for it. I would kind of rule it as like roll fortitude and then if you fail it, roll will saves. 
and you would see the effect by rolling on the table. I've included some examples from things I've seen. I've seen people singing underwater. I've seen th people like giving air to the fish because they think fish can't breathe underwater. I've, I've seen a lot of things like that. You would introduce these like role play elements to uh, the underwater behavior of your players. Play with their mind. Uh, make some minor hallucinations, maybe like some colors get brighter, they get happy or they get like reckless or something. And how I would divide this is, you remember the, the depth levels, every time you enter a new level I would do like the, the check. And I would do it only once, you don't need to be like, you don't need to make it uh, complex. So on the first level, make the check easy, maybe roll a DC 10 if you're playing Pathfinder or d, &D or something like that. Make it easy and only make the check when they acquire the first Deku token. For the second level, as soon as you enter the second level, I would roll Narcosis uh, will saves, fortitude saves, and I would make it a medium roll. And of course, for the third one, I would make it a harder roll. Uh, there is a limit to this, I would do only three levels and after that there is uh, a threshold of no return which entails that if you pass that level you have a very hard a narcosis roll you feel the the depths calling to you and you cannot no longer use your body and use your equipment to surface so you're permanently dead and if perm permadeath is not your thing like at least fake it at least like give uh, sufficient telegraphing of the danger to your players as soon as someone passes the threshold the others are aware of it so they like swim to to that person to save them so let's recap um you have the air supply and you're constantly worrying about that timer and could you share it can it malfunction all that stuff you have the deco levels that give you the progression of the difficulty of underwater exploration in each of those levels you have narcosis that plays with your mind and also you have the line of no return and now when you hear this and it's based on real diving you would ask why would I ever go diving but trust me it's a very fun sport I mean it's an extreme sport so even your players should ex feel like they are in extreme uh, conditions because all the exploration and everything that I see it's like the same as on land, but like underwater, it, you just get another access for combat and all that. But what about exploration itself? What about dark places? What about like visibility? That's also something that we're struggling with. So when you go into a lake, you can see like one meter in front of you. Like try to play around with these uh, concepts and be aware of the rule bloat. So don't take all of these concepts and just mix them together. That will take a lot of time at the table. It won't be fun for anyone. Pick and choose a couple of these mechanics and then they will have their synergies and you will get the suspense you want. So another thing, and this is the last one uh, that I first encountered in Bali, like really, really encountered it, is currents. Uh, usually where I dive, I dive in the Red Sea and there you don't have that much of a current. But underwater currents, they can be really strong. And w what is interesting to me is that they can not only be strong, they can alternate. Like go, you go with the current and they suddenly change and you're swimming against the current. And this can happen on a timer die. Maybe if you're in the middle of an encounter and or you're chasing someone and the currents suddenly change. Depending on the, the strength of the current, you might like have to do some saves or you might uh, go backwards, like hit something. The possibilities are endless here, really. But what is interesting and what they taught us in Bali is that uh, depending on where you are in terms of like how deep you are in relation to the bottom, that dictates how strong the current will pull you. So if you're very close to the ground, to the bottom, you would actually feel less of a current. And if you're very shallow, you would feel the waves, but you weren't, you wouldn't feel the current that much. In the middle, it's where it's the worst. And you can also define these levels like when you're 10 meters deep, 20 meters deep, 30 meters deep, whatever. To make it easier, you can align this with deco uh, levels. So if you decide to use currents and, and deco tokens, you won't have that much of a like computational overload in your DM head. Right, so some ideas on like which penalties the currents would give to the players, I don't know. Like if you're on the first level, like you're the, the shallowest, well, treat it as difficult terrain, just 
that's it. If you're on a harder level, you can also treat it as half speed. You just move at half speed. And on the hardest level, so in the middle, you would do like a save or go backwards. Maybe roll on how much you go backwards or something like that. The types of current are also really interesting. So we said we have like the alternating current. So it goes with you, then against you, then with you, then against you on a certain timer. The currents that are actually interesting are when two currents meet, they form like a um, a vortex that pulls you downwards and this is very dangerous because remember the point of no return well you don't want to pass that so and also the nar narcosis is getting like more intense and more intense so when you encounter these currents that pull you down what do you do you have to hang close with your buddies you have to like try to swim up it can be a whole intense scenario where you just stop the combat if you're in combat or stop what you're doing and just try to survive and like go uh, against this current that's pulling you downwards and you can like even describe the enemies just like flushing <laughs> almost like down the toilet you better like and subscribe for this because I'm all wet and let me tell you here it's winter it's very cold so you better hit that subscribe button like and look at that little um what is that a little coffee sign thing uh thank you so much for watching and as always keep on going keep on loving keep on being creative play more D&D &D, and I will see you in the next one farewell keep